So now as we look at Miriam, right, when we look at Miriam, and we begin to understand that what was, what, what, like someone would say, well, what was Miriam's problem? You know, like why did Miriam, you know, why, why did she speak against Moses? And, and Aaron too. Why did he speak against Moses? You understand? Because of his Ethiopian wife. Now, the, the Gentile Christianity, European whitewash Christianity would say, well, it's because um, um, uh, racial. First, they, they, they'll try to make you believe, they'll try to make believe that there's this racial dimension that almost like to say one was black and one was white. Like the, like the converted modern day um, um, European Jews, you understand? They'll, they'll try to give you that sort of imagery you said of it, so one was Ethiopian and one was a, you know, one was like a Jew, uh, European. You know what I'm saying? But but you have to remember that Miriam, Miriam, was not a Jew. I know that was that was surprise, folks. But Miriam was not a Jew. How do we know she was not a Jew? She was not a Jew in the sense of she was not of the tribe of Judah. If we define, how do we define a Jew? If we say Jew is of Judah, she was not of the tribe of Judah. She was of the tribe of Levi. Of Levi, you understand, as was her brothers, her two brothers. Now, the interesting thing about this Torah portion, and the thing that's being revealed even in our Torah portion, Rastafari um, Torah portion studies, as we start to, you know, study the word, you understand, to find the truth in it, you understand, wherever the truth leads us to, if it's, if it's verified and confirmed that's the truth, then so be it. You understand, then so be it. You understand, so. We have a love of the truth. There's many who don't have a love of the truth. So when they recognize that it's getting too black, you know what I'm saying, or it's getting too African, they try to say, well, the people were from outer space who built the pyramids or that, you know, something else. They, 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 they would try to, and, and that's just bad because that's why they don't, that's why, the, that's why things are getting so bad. But people are just lying because they can't admit, well, this is, this is a black. This is African. And here's Ethiopia's role in it. You understand that truth is truth. You understand? So in this Rastafari right knowledge on, on, on the Torah, you understand, and putting the Torah into its proper context, we have to touch on Egypt. This is why we use this picture over here, actually. You might see this picture over here. You know, let's see if we can straighten this out a little bit, a little bit more so you can see it more um, front and center. I don't know how well you can see that right there. Should we tilt this like this? Um, but what you see right here is um, this, this Egyptian picture. You have to recognize that in, in um, let's put some light on it. In ancient Egypt, what was the role of Miriam? You understand? We use this as this is the Hathor type. She was like a she was like a um, of the order of 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 Hathor. Was Miriam Hathor? Yes. She wasn't Hathor in the sense that she was the first original ever Hathor. But no, it's just like today. Like today, ones have certain so-called saints. And the, and the true orientation of a saint is like a brother or sister that inspires you by their manifestation of the Word of God. They become like a, an example you know what I'm saying, for you. But in, in the wrong interpretation, these saints are deified. You know what I'm saying? You know when Christ said that he who gives one a cup of cold water, even a name of a disciple. You know, like if you receive one, you know, a disciple, as a disciple, you get a disciple's reward. If you, if you receive one as a, as a king, you get a king's reward. As a prophet, and a prophet's reward on that level, that in ancient Egypt, the same principle was practiced, but the religion, or the spirituality in a sense, had become on a very real level a form of spiritual bondage, of spiritual bondage. This was, see, a lot of folks be saying, well, the Israelites were enslaved in, in Egypt, and they had them doing hard labor. Yeah, there were some physical labors that had to go on, but the real bondage, you know, it's like right now we as Rastafari, we as Ethiopian Hebrews, you understand? Um, we really can't fully worship our God 
You know what I'm saying? Worship Yahweh. Worship John, the Father, in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach, according to the ordinance and the way that he has given us in this particular lamb. Because they'll say if we use the cannabis, they'll say that the cannabis, you know, the cannabis is, is, is illegal. You understand? Why is it illegal? Because they're man-made laws because cannabis does not connect with their Greek gods. You know, and they're Roman gods that you see on all the states. Every state is has, has, has a motto written in Latin and often has some of these goddess images. You ever go around the court buildings and the law buildings and, and the government buildings and you see these Greco-Roman gods that have nothing, they don't come out the Bible. Why they mix up their Roman European gods, it's all right for them to have their Roman European gods on their state seals. You know what I'm saying? And yet they'll talk about, well, really, it's a Christian nation. Well, how in the world do these two things really, you know, do these two things match up? It doesn't. That's just the hypocrisy. You know what I'm saying? They do what they want to do. They're not doing the Father's will. They have not made the, their wills obedient to good influences. But that's their choice. Every man or group of men or nation has a right to decide its own destiny. All right? And I and I must decide I and our own destiny based on the love of the truth. And in this love of the truth, this has led us to this point in this Torah portion that concerns the death of Miriam. But we're seeing more and more of this connection that really discloses to us, you know what I'm saying, Miriam's perspective. Everybody says, well, Miriam, she was upset about this. Or Miriam, she said that because she's an Ethiopian and she was a black woman. Or because others will say in the New Testament sense, Old Testament Jews uh, would say because she was a black woman, right? Um, New Testament white folks will say because she was a Gentile, right? And the Old Testament are correct with the fact that uh, that um, Sipara, Zipporah, was a black woman or an Ethiopian woman, all right? But they're incorrect to imply or express, you know what I'm saying, or express that Miriam was somehow not a black woman in the sense that we call black people black today herself. You know what I'm saying? Now, the difference between the two was almost like the difference between an African black you know, like an African black person or an African from one culture, you understand, and an African from the next culture. So it was a cultural difference. You understand? That's what we thought, and that's what a part of it can be interpreted as rightly. But then there's a next level of it, and this is why I'm going through this part right here as well. You know what I'm saying? So when we move forward to the other portion of the scripture and the Torah, these things will become more and more evident for us. Is turn your Bible to Micah, Micah, right? Micah chapter six, verse four. And, and this is why we have this right here, too, as well, right? What is this? All right now, this symbol right here, this is the red heifer. This is the red heifer symbology, right? And this right up here. Let's call this uh, Sipara, Zipporah, right? We'll call this Zipporah. This stands in this Queen T right here, Nubian Queen of Egypt. Because Nubia, that direction is also is called by the academic, the Orientalist, that's called Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? That's Ethiopia. Although that is not greater Ethiopia, that's like really lower Ethiopia. Nubia is lower Ethiopia. And more what we have Ethiopia today would be upper Ethiopia. But lower Ethiopia is what's known as upper Egypt. It might seem a little bit, but, you know, think about it and just go over that. And, but you need to understand what that means. You know what I'm saying? Now, this, symbol, this symbology here with the horns and with the red moon, some say this is in the middle. Some say this is a sign of Nibiru. You know what I'm saying? It could be. You know what I'm saying? In the cyclic order of events, it may well be. And that is not far-fetched. You know, we're putting things in their proper context. But unfortunately, most of the world is under the dominion of the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? The Gentiles. And the Gentiles also control the airways. So they make these movies. And they make these documentaries. 
and they make these other programs and materials where they basically put out the views or their interpretation of the views or their ideas, you know what I'm saying, which basically bolster their opinion, but not the truth. But it's not the truth. You know what I mean? Because when we see some obvious things, they want to tell us that the Egyptians were not black. I mean, can you imagine that? And people would actually even engage in arguments. It's like arguing for a blind person. You understand? When they want to say things like that, that the Egyptians are not black. You understand? To even, you know, to even entertain that. You understand? In any real, in any real seriousness, you understand, really needs to be dismissed. You know, that the Egyptians, that the Egyptians were not black. Or somehow that the only black ones are the Nehesia, or the, the Nehesi, what they call the Negroes, you understand, the dark skin, you know, um, sub-Saharan blacks are the only blacks. It's like saying that this is how they divide and conquer. You know what I'm saying? This is how they divide and conquer. Because they know that unity is strength. This is why Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 says he would turn to us a pure language. This is why our Ethiopic language is so, so very, you know what I'm saying, it's very crucially, it's crucially important. So let's go right here for a moment, right? Let's go right here for a moment to Micah, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, Mikias, 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 um, chapter 6, right? Chapter 6, verse 4. And we want to just explain briefly that, there is this trinity, or there was this trinity from the perspective of those who would receive it as such, right? Receive it as such. And I don't know if you can see this right here. I don't know how well you can see this right here. Let's, let's go right here. Yeah, how well you can receive this. It's a little bit dark right here. But this is the, this is the Royal Amharic. It says, it says right here, Bamarinya Besama where Wali Woman says the Kadus, Aharu, Amlak, it says, Kagibit Midr Awit Chehalo, Awit Chehalo, Kabarneta Baitim, Te Te Beja Chehalo, Besita Hima Musainna Aronin Mariaminim Like Li. Like Lehnebar, the Targum over here, for I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Now, this is what's very interesting. It's speaking of a trinity. A, a particular trinity, and, 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 and here's what's the key to really now overstanding this, right? Overstanding this. This right here, you notice, you notice this right here, similar to this over here. Notice, right? This is, this is the, the red heifer. You understand the red heifer? The red heifer. Now, it's interesting the ritual that's being done. It's a once- it's a once, almost like a once for all time ritual, the red heifer and the waters of separation. But this is an explanation now of how for the Egyptians who came out, part of that mixed multitude, as well as for the Israelites who still were heavily Egyptianized, just like we today are Americanized, all right, so we see things through this particular spectacle. It says right here, Yahweh is speaking to them and this is where the Lord's, this is the Lord's past and present controversy with Israel. This is interesting, the Schofield uh, reference Bible, our study Bible here, for our Rastafari and Line of Judah Bible study. It says right here on page 949 of Micah, chapter 6, it's a part 3, and it says, The Lord's Adonai's past and present controversy. So, John has had a controversy in past times, and even in the present time, he has a controversy with Israel, with his people. You know what I'm saying? With this lost black sheep of the Beta Israel. 
Verse 1, hear ye now what Yahweh, yod Hey wow Hey saith. Arise, rise up. Right? We're uprising, right? Rise up, get up, stand up, rise. Contend thou before the mountains. Contend before the mountains. And let the hills hear thy voice. Now, it's obvious it's using verbal hieroglyphics here. This is what we have to become clear with. It's using a kind of a sense of um, verbal hieroglyphs are being used at this particular point here. It, it, when the mountains, the mountains symbolically, which are likened to pyramids, with large pyramids, great pyramids, and hills, small pyramids, from an Egyptic you know, perspective, you know, remember that Moses had an Egyptic perspective, but he had it in truth. You have to understand he overstood the real root because he was able to trace it to that pre-dynastic, the purity, you understand, know when he went to the headwaters, you understand, know and through his father-in-law, you understand, know Jethro, Yotor, and his marriage, you understand, know to his, in a sense, Orset. His Orset became Sipara. Sipara. You remember the part where it says, and the Lord wanted to kill Moses because he didn't circumcise his children, and then it was Sipara who actually circumcised him. Thou have become a bloody husband to me. You know what I'm saying? And it said that the Lord then didn't want to kill him anymore. I mean, that's a little cryptic there. You know what I'm saying? But the people then overstood it. People now don't understand it because they're not able to look at it in the context of the time. They are bringing their Gentile, white, Western mentality to it. You know what I'm saying? And whenever we look at this African or Ethiopian, you know, some folks, because they don't love the truth, they're not able to receive it. But John says he will give them a strong delusion. They'll believe a lie. You know what I'm saying? So we have to separate. Be ye separate. Be ye holy because John is holy. Abba Kedus is holy. Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is Kedusu. He is the Holy One. Now, for the Beta Israel, these were the gods that brought them out. You remember that scene where it says, make us something, make us or what you call them, of the gods that brought them out? You know what I'm saying? That brought them out of Egypt and everything. And then what did he do? He made a golden what? Calf. Now, why did he make a calf? And why didn't he make instead this right here? You see, because if he made this right here, if he, if he created this sort of image for the Israelites instead of the golden calf, Aaron would have most likely died also as well as the other Israelites right there. You understand? And that's the key because we ask, so wait, they worship the golden calf. Aaron made it. How come Aaron didn't die as well? Because, see, there's an inner religious controversy. There's Adonai's, the Lord's controversy that is going on here. Remember what we told you from the Ethiopic legend of Mary? And the Ethiopic legend of Mary is very interesting because it says why Miriam, you know, she was cursed because the Lord Adonai didn't want any woman to have the name of his mother because his mother's name is Kedis. It's, it's holy, feminine sense, Kedis, as he is Kedus. You understand? And she did, right? And Ja almost nearly killed her, some would say. And the Ethiopic legend of Kedis and Glamariam explained that, and we touched on that in the previous RSS for this particular for this particular um, this particular week, you know what I'm saying, this particular time that we're in. This is why we wanted to actually touch on this and address this right here, you know what I'm saying, before, you know what I'm saying, before we move forward, you know what I'm saying, with the next portion, the 40th portion. So he didn't make this, but he made the calf. Now that portrays an uh, inner, uh, inner sense, you, you know what I mean, a... Uh, 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 esoteric sense. See, people get confused on the exoteric, the fact that it was a calf. But why was it a calf and not a cow? It wasn't Hathor. You understand? Know no, it was a calf. It was the baby. You understand? Know the, the child. You understand? Know it was a child that they were worshiping in the bondage form of the religion. So they went backward and not forward. But here's the disclosure right here. Now, the mountains are the kingdoms, and the hills are, you know, the governments big and small. It says, Hear ye, O mountains. And it was all nations of the hear this. What is this? This is 
the Amawi Haila Shalase controversy. You understand? This is he who is who he is controversy. And ye strong foundations of the earth. For Yahweh, for Jah, hath a controversy with his people. This is why I keep saying that what's going on with black folks can't change by any other way until we recognize who we are. You understand? Recognize who we are, who we were, what we're doing, how we got here. You understand? And that's only with the gospel, the good news of his majesty, and the true preaching of the word. Not all this counterfeit stuff. All this, all this slave masters, so-called um, Christianity. There's a controversy that Jah has with his people. He didn't say he has a controversy with everybody in the earth. He didn't say he has a controversy with the Romans or controversy with the Greeks. You know what I'm saying? Or controversy with the Europeans. No, he has a controversy with his people. Remember, this is the Old Testament. So, understand this Old Testament, his people is beta, it's Arayel. You know what I'm saying? This is the once lost but now found black sheep of the family, the Afro Shemites, the Ethiopian Hebrews. Jah has a controversy with I and I. Just like the King of Kings has a controversy with the careless Ethiopians. That's why they're going through what they're going through today. You know what I'm saying? All the confusion, all the disunity, all the tribalism, all the blood on blood. Oh, my people, what have I done to thee? What did Hila Selassie, Katamari, Hila Selassie really do wrong to those people? You know, and to our careless so-called Ethiopians, even though they blame him for, they blame him for education. They blame him for modernization. They blame him for ending slavery. So it shows, well, who they are. They're not of the al Kidan. Just like there are many who are of Israel who are not Israel. There's many who say they're Ethiopian, but they're not truly al Kidan. It's your Piawiyan. They're not covered in Ethiopia. So he asked this, O oh, my people, what have I done to thee? What has John done wrong to this lost sheep? You know what I'm saying? What has he done to them? And wherein have I wearied thee? How has he worn us out? You know what we get to find as we start to study? And the most difficult thing might be just getting into the right frame of mind. And, and, and we have to do that with prayer, not just human effort, but really praying for that wisdom. And in James, he speaks about praying. And when we pray to our Kedus, to Kedus Abatach, and to our Father who art in heaven, Avinu Shabbat Shemayim, Abuna Zebet Samayat. You know what I'm saying? When we pray, we, we don't pray double-minded. It's not yay, maybe, 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 shmaybe. You know, we latch our, sub, our, objective, our subjective faith, faith as the subject of our life, our imnet, to him who is the amen. See Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Sounds Egyptian, doesn't it? You understand? But understand this. He says, testify against me. So we look for the testimony against his majesty. All the false things. I mean, we haven't found one really point that none of the naysayers have said. I mean, and, and this is looking these things up, researching these things, getting to the fact, and opening our and ourselves up that, well, maybe Hannah Selassie did do something, something wrong. But we can't find it. I mean, the wrong thing, if we want to say something he did wrong, you know what I'm saying, it, it's probably the same thing that, 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 that the Almighty has done wrong, and that's allowing... You understand these um, these rebels to even live, if you want to call that wrong. But it's the mercy of Yeshua HaMoshiach. But where sin abounds, right, their grace abounds much more. See, this is because Jah is a lover of humanity. His majesty is a lover. That's why he said in the revolution, though he recognized what was going on, the creeping coup, the Illuminati coup against him. You understand? He said no bloodshed. No bloodshed. You know, many thought he was crazy. They say he was senile. How come he didn't just call out the army? You know what I'm saying? That would not change people's hearts and minds. That would not prove the point. Sometimes you have to allow people, you know what I'm saying, to proverbially make their bed and lay in it. So all those blame Hollis Elisi the first. Tell them, y'all made your bed. So lay in it. You know what I'm saying? Lay in it. Or repent. Or repent. You know what I'm saying? Repent. Right? If it's people who are called by my name should turn, right? They, they, you know what Corinthians says right there? That's good advice. How come your pastors, your preachers, your bishops aren't telling you that? Verse 4 is what we're getting to. 
for I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So now he's retrospecting where he brought the people up out of the land of Egypt. And he redeemed thee. He brought us back. He purchased us again out of the house of servants, out of the house of so-called bondage. You know what I'm saying? Out of the house of bondage. And I sent before thee Moses, right? Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Now, why is this all connected? You understand? Know why is all this connected? Because, in a sense, Moses was as a Osa or an Osiris type, if you oversee. You understand? Know because he is the one. You know, saying that was dead. You know, he was dead to them, but he almost comes forward again as the Haru. But when Yahweh says that you will be a god to Pharaoh, well, who was the god? You know, saying during that particular period of time, it was Osar. So you will be as that resurrected Osar. But they didn't know of Joseph, so how could Osar resurrect? He was of the underworld. You know what I'm saying? Of the other world. But now, why would Aaron be like the Harpocrates? You know what I'm saying? Because remember, he's pointing to his mouth. Remember, it says that Aaron would be, you know what I'm saying? Aaron would be your spokesman. Aaron will be the one who speaks. You will be the God. And Aaron will be the one who speaks. So we want to connect this very simply, very clearly. You know what I'm saying? That Moses, Aaron, and, and Miriam are that Exodus trinity. This is the Exodus Trinity, very clear in the word. Now, with that overstood, it becomes clear now why Miriam, in that sense, would have a problem, in that sense, with Moses' Ethiopian wife, for, for, for twofold reason. One, because this is what brought them out, according to Micah, Micah chapter 6, verse 4. He says, for I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants, and I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Moses, Aaron, and Miriam were sent before the people. So for the Beta Israel, this was a, this was a trinity. This, this, this was a manifestation, you understand, of that Egyptian trinity. You know and Yahweh says, I sent them. Yes, the Trinity, Yahweh. Uh, he, he understood that. What you think? This is lost to Yahweh. This is lost to Jah. That, that they were a Trinity right here. But look what was lost. What happened with Miriam? Miriam gets a grudge or gets bad vibes against, um, against Sipara. Why? Why would she do that? Why would these two ladies, really, we don't want to say two ladies in a sense, but we want to say like it was really... Who had, who had the real problem, all right? Who had the real problem? Well, it's very clear who had the real problem. The scriptures tell us who had the real problem. You know what I'm saying? Because Zipari represents a higher order. And now, and now there's a different sort of a triunity. Because remember how heavily steep that the people were in this. It's like the first generation or so that comes out of America. The most difficult thing that we want to have to be conscious of is all that Americanism and schism that was, was in us. So we really have to invest in our children and do this for the children and children's sake because there's some things that we already got, 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 got wrong. So it's only by grace. You know what I'm saying? That we are truly saved. You know what I'm saying? Grace and through faith. You know what I'm saying? Through the true Amen. So it's because Sipara now would represent not so much just the Hathor type here, but the higher type. Remember, Hathor was, Haru was the sister of, um, said to be the sister in some of the Egyptian um, um, denominations and theologies, theological and uh, speculations, the sister of Oset, of Isis, the sister. In some senses, she almost is in a similar role. Now, notice what I said before, that Miriam, she never gave birth. Now, see, how much different would that be? If she gave birth, then her child would be as that what? Calf. Don't you understand? A red heifer is a cow that has not given birth. What do they worship? They did not worship. Or what did, or what did Aaron make for them? He made a golden calf. 
Very interesting he didn't make this right here. He knew that John had sent Moses himself and his sister, so he could have represented like this, like in ancient Egypt, we see the Egyptian trinity like this. But see, if he did it like this, that would have been a clear, a clear signal that they, instead of being sons and daughters of God, children of God, that now they had wanted to make themselves God and that fallen to the old, to the old um, hoodoo. You know, who do you think you be? You know, we're saying, oh, you're God now. You're not a child of God, but you are God. You was born the other day, and you made the heavens and earth. Really, you're not a son of God, but you're going to... So he didn't do this right here. He gave them the calf. And Moses understood this too. He was very clear about what, what, what went on, because I couldn't figure out why did Moses, you know... And a lot of people say, well, it was his brother. That's why he did it. He did it because it was his brother. And he didn't want to, you know, kill his brother. You understand? But he killed the other people. You understand? No, 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 no. You don't understand that in ancient Egypt, what Aaron did, Aaron was in the priesthood in ancient Egypt. Let's understand. He was in the priesthood in ancient Egypt. Remember Yahweh himself saying that, Moses, you are a god. What god? You are a god. What did, what did the burning bush say to Moses? Right? Eh, yeah. Shara or Asher Eh Ya Eh Ya Eh Ya Ahio Ahia Ahio Which in good is some of them hard listeners might say, Oh Ahia No not Ahia that's because you don't know good is. You see Ahia is different than Ahia eh, eh, yeah. Yours that's why all the H's are not to be pronounced the same way, neither are all the S's to be pronounced the same way. You already know there's a te and there's a te. Two, all the T's not to be pronounced the same way. Each one, each letter has its distinction. It's like the trumpet thing. Like if a trumpet don't give a clear sound, how will the army know when to mobilize? So there's confusion. So Yahweh said, Moses, you are as a what? You are as a G. You are a net uh, to Pharaoh. And Aaron, Aaron will be your prophet. Now in the Egyptian sense, this was a, a Osiris Horus kind of, kind of a matrix right there. But now Miriam, no doubt, must have felt left out as the prominence now more and more came to his wife, which the people even would recognize, well, she's, she's had, you know, a child. She's had a couple of children. So she's actually, you remember the jealousy that went on with Sarah and um, 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 actually Hagar, Akar, the Akar and, 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 and Sarah, you know what I'm saying, the Sarah and Akar. You know, you know what happened in that kind of demonstration right there as well. You know what I'm saying? So this is why she had, a, she had this problem, you know what I'm saying, that she would speak against her. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't say what she said, because probably for it to say what she said would lend a lot of support to a lot of these ones who wanted to go backward to, to Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Because it, but the context is very clear. That's all when we see the red heifer. You know what I'm saying? The, the, red, the sacrifice of the red heifer and the water of, circuit, of, of separation. The water of separation was there for what? For uncleanness. In a sense, Miriam's leprosy became that sign of her uncleanness, but then we also see a sign within a sign within a sign. You know what I'm saying? Because today, you know, we have this tanning, you know, this tanning addiction and melanoma and, and sunburn and, 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 and modern form of leprosy even today on that so-called level as well. So it's interesting the key sign that was, that was put on her because the same sign was put on Moses' hand. Think about it. He put his hand into his bosom. He pulled it out. You know what I'm saying? It was white as snow. It was leprous. You know what I'm saying? It was like a, like, a, like, a, like a European, in a sense. So it shows that he couldn't be European and pull out his hand and turn to white. I mean, oh, wow, wow. You know what I'm saying? What are you going to say? The next thing you're going to say is that, well, Moses was a white man. He had a tan. And so his hand was tan. He put it in, and then he took it out, and it was untanned. You know what I'm saying? It was untanned. Then he used a spray bottle. I mean, it's better if they just tell us something like that. You know what I'm saying? At least it might be a little bit humorous. You know what I'm saying? But still, you should not believe, be naive it. You know what I'm saying? So this is what's really behind this kind of um, controversy that's going on here. And the key element that also 
I mentioned it before, that seems a little disconnected when we read it today because we're not looking in the context of ancient Egypt and ancient Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? We're not putting, you know, first things first. But when we put first things first, it becomes clear that circumcision incident when it says that God wanted to kill who? Moses. He just sent Moses down to go to Egypt. Why don't want to kill him? He didn't circumcise his son. Right? He didn't circumcise his son. Right? And who circumcised? It was his 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 Ethiopian wife. You understand? But now over is how the Trinity now changes in a sense for those who are still looking at it in terms of ancient Egypt. John says he sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. You understand? Miriam. Remember when they're saying when they said on uh, is, is Moses the only one that um, God speaks to? Are we all prophets? You know what I'm saying? Are we all prophets? What are you thinking? Like it's just about him. Can you imagine too? Because his sister, his sister, we know was older, and I, I think his brother was older too. You know what I'm saying? But definitely his sister. If his sister is the same one with the bulrushes and 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 the and and the um the 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 basket. You know what I mean? The ark that was put on the waters of the Nile and how Moses was adopted. Notice Moses was adopted as who? As 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 Pharaoh's um daughter's son. You know what I'm saying? So even the sign of the kingship is very obvious. The sign of the kingship is with him even from ancient Egypt. He could have come back to Egypt and really claimed the throne. That's what some thought he was coming back to do, to claim the throne. But he said, no, no, I've come, as I say, let my people go, your people. You understand? Know Remember, he came back not just as Moses, the messenger of God. No, he came back as a God to Pharaoh. Get that through your thick skull. He didn't come back as a, as, a, as a God to the true God. No, the true God sent him as a God to Pharaoh. You know what I'm and now Yahweh tells us here in Micah chapter 6 verse 4 For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam Moses, Aaron, and Miriam And this is interesting right here too Verse 5 O oh my people, remember now what Balak that, We're about to go into Balak You understand? Balak Right? King of Moab Moab you understand? There's a lot of Moabite black folks running around, and, and you probably see them and know them. You know, some, some, you know, it's interesting. You know, all your um, um, Jennifer Hudson's out there, and your uh, Brandy. You understand? They even have the features of Moab. Now, there's nothing wrong with Moab. You understand? In the basic sense of human being type. You understand? But see, they don't know themselves. It, it, it's, it's like when you look at um, Ruth. Ruth was a Moabitess. She becomes the great grandmother or the grandmother of great King David. You understand? Know she becomes part of that lineage, even though she was a Moabitess, and the and the scripture said that a Moabitess shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. It doesn't say a Moabitess. It says a Moabite male shall not enter in. But if a Moabite woman, you understand, if she accepts the true God, especially how Ruth, Cherut, notice Cherut. We got Cherut again. Cherut which is very interesting when we talk about the chit charu, you know what I'm saying, Ethiopically, or we get in the language, then it clears up a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Let's us know what we're looking at. You know what I'm saying? And um, this is the brother's book that, that we advertise also. Uh, the Ethiopian brother wrote that book, um, um, Ireland, brother, brother Ireland, that particular book. Uh, huh? Legacy, legacy, legacy. Um, his particular book as well, which is a good start. You understand? We think it need to go deeper, but still, we give thanks for that start, right? So, notice, like even behind this T figure right here, you have you have this king and this queen. You understand? She felt basically left out. I mean, we don't even know whether she was married. You understand? Um, Miriam. You understand? Um. I'm not going to say it's, it was sad or whatever like that, but um, now we understand a little bit more of what her, some of her motivations were, and we can't, we can't understand that unless we go to the root. I'm going to say unless we go to the root, but here in Micah chapter 6, verse 5, it says, Oh, my people, my people. It's not saying, oh, everybody in the world, all of you are my people. You understand? No. 
But that's not true. You know, the worst thing when they be telling people everybody's the children of God. No, no, no. Everybody's creatures of God. They're all creatures. He created them, whether they want to recognize him as their creator. But they're not all his children. You see, being a child means that he would have had to give birth to you. That means you have been born of his seed. You know what I mean? Not some other racial seed well, in the racial level, in the human level, in the physical level. But spiritually, you have to be born of his word. You understand? So all these heathen and sheathen and abominable and lost men and people, they have an ability. I mean, they have a, they have an opportunity. Now, whether they want to use their ability, you know, they want to choose. You know, like the architect, he can't get past any choice. Avino Shabbat Shemayim can't get past any choice. The choice is yours. He's already made his will clear. Now, what are you going to do? Now that you found the love of Jah, the word of Jah, the truth of Jah. Oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted. And what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim to Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness, the righteous man. I and I used to say in Rastafari, we used to say righteousness, we used to say, yes, the I righteous man. You know the I righteous man is? The righteous man of God, of the King of Kings, is Yeshua, Yeshua HaMoshiach. That's his righteous man. That is the righteous man. I mean, look at his Matthew's own utterance, his own testimony. Wherewith shall I come before Yahweh and bow myself before the high God or El Elyon? In other words, how can I come before the Father and how can I bow myself before the Son is what he's saying. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will Yahweh be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn, my, my Horus, my Cherui, for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? Yeah, that's deep. You've got to really meditate on that. That's what people are doing, doing every day. You understand? I mean, they're allowing their children to be sacrificed. You understand? And this society is sacrificing youth, children, and women. Women are in the midst of some madness, some madness out there. You understand? And we who know John know that there's a divine responsibility in this time. And the first thing, it begins with getting informed. And then we can get involved. He that shewed thee, O oh man, what is good? He who shows you, O oh man, what is good and what Yahweh doth require of thee. But to do justly, to do what is righteous, what is fit to, you understand? What is according to the fit to, you understand? The, 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 the rit to ah, the rit to ah, you understand? The rit to it. And to love mercy. Because mercy triumph over judgment or over condemnation. There can be mercy if there's a sign of repentance. If one brings forth a fruit of repentance, one, the judge can have mercy. But if you don't have no fruit of repentance, no willingness to change your way, the judge is don't, under no obligation to have mercy. You understand? And so it is with our father, his father. And to walk humbly, to walk humbly, with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth to the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. You, I got to underline that one right there. Did you see that right there in Micah? Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6, verse um, verse 9. Now, if you're not looking this up for yourself and saying, oh, you're a fool, really. You know what I mean? If you're not taking note of this when you can and look it up. You know, study this for yourself so you can see this for yourself so you won't say, well, Ross Iadonis said it. Well, yeah, I said it, but you should be able to say it because you know it's true. You understand? If one say, well, how did you hear this? Where do you hear this from? Then you can say, yeah, the brother in such and such. But you need to stand. You know, every bottle got to stand on its own bottom. You understand? No hand holding. You understand? Hold your hand, his spiritual hand. Hold the word. Hold the faith. You understand? Yahweh's voice cried to the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Edomali Chayla Shalai say, Hear ye the rod. Hear ye the rod. Hear ye the rod. And check this out. And who hath appointed it? 
You know, everybody's wrestling for the high seat. You know, like a bunch of babies. And wrestling when it's in the high seat. You know what I'm saying? But here's the rod. You know what I'm saying? Here's the rod. And who has appointed it? Still talking in this symbology right here. The rod and the staff, the rod and the scepter, right? And there are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? And where are there still treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? And the scant measure that is abominable? And a scant measure, you know, like, you know, one's giving their all to Satan on an antichrist world and, and can't give nothing to Jah. Even don't give Jah the Shabbat. Give them, give them the, the day. You know, that time, their mind, their heart. You understand? But giving all the, and that scantness of a measure. You understand? Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances? Shall I count them pure? You understand? Know pure with the wicked balances? Unbalanced? Imbalanced? And with the bag of deceitful weights? You know how they used to, and they still do. How they like, like it's like when you go and you get a big bag of, of chips or something in the store, or you, or you buy something, and it's like in a big carton, and you shake it, and it's like mostly empty. You know, it's just like that. Why don't they just make a smaller thing? You know, instead of giving you this big, 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 big bag. Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances and with a bag of deceitful weights? Or like they can pay everybody else reparations, but they don't even want to pay pay the lost sheep, Beta Israel reparation, and then you have some Negroes who having, whose knee, because a knee is symbolic of strength, you understand, the sign Cap Capricornus, you understand, but the, the knee is symbolic of strength, because they're, they're weak in strength, their knee don't grow, their strength, instead of getting stronger, they get weaker, because they do not submit to the teaching of His Majesty, they're not conforming themselves. They're, they're pleasing men and people, but they're making Jah angry. They're becoming friends of the world. You understand? And they don't recognize Jah is angry with them. But there's still time. They can still repent if they hear the word. But a lot of them harden in, harden in that rebellion. But don't, 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 don't sorry for them. You know, there's still joy in Jah and in Joshua. For the rich men thereof are full of violence. No. For real. The rich men there are full of violence. People say, you, you get rich because you work hard. Because they work hard for it. Ha ha. Ha ha. You want to sell me a bridge now? Mm-hmm. And you all know the bridge is over. The London Bridge is, is, is falling down. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. My black lady is rising. You know what I'm saying? For the rich men thereof are full of violence. And the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies. They have spoken lies. How come you're preaching and passing on going to? They, they, they tell you the same verses that you, you know, you, you almost know by heart the verse, but you really don't know what it means. And you wonder, well, how come things aren't getting better? You know what I'm saying? This is for us. You know what I'm saying? Black folks. You know what I'm saying? Why well, black folks got so much problem? You know what I'm saying? Well, we still can't get over slavery. You no, know, because slavery and that, that still bother us. Well, what about Christ's word? I mean... See, because you don't want to go to the truth in the word, because that word is the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the rich men thereof are full of violence, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Chant. Their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. It's, their tongue is like a snake in their mouth. Therefore also will I make thee Sick in smiting thee. You know, black folks, our lost sheep are sick. And, and sick because in smiting thee. Now, this is Yahweh, this is the Son. You know saying? This is, this is the Son speaking to us, actually. Mm hmm. Because remember, it says that the Son spoke through the what? Spoke through the prophets. You know, saying? according to our Ethiopic creed, it's, it's the Son who speaks through the prophets. You understand? That's part of our basic Tawahid or Ritit Hymenot or Ritit Amin. Here it says that he's going to make us sick and smiting thee and beating us. You understand? We always get hit with something. Now we have like AIDS and, and, and retardation and double mindedness and just a bunch of sickness. You understand? And, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the tribal violence, blacks killing blacks. 
the lost sheep killing each other, a whole generation, a whole crack generation, that, that, that's being smitten. That's what make, makes these people sick. You know what I'm saying? In making thee desolate because of thy sins. And not talking about all the personal sins. Like everybody points to that one and you did that and you did that. No, it's speaking to us as a people. Remember he's saying, my people. Whenever you want to say, well, there are some people who do this and there's some people among you like that, he points it out. But he's speaking to the collective group. You know what I'm saying? To the collective. He's speaking to all of I and I and I as a corporate entity. Verse 14, thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. And you know, Negroes, we blacks, we love to eat, right? Niggas are like, why, why you be doing that, man? Why you be hustling? Why you, you know, a nigga got to eat, man. I, I got to eat. You know, I got to eat, man. You got to eat, right? But they're not satisfied. They're eating, 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 but they're not satisfied. And so bugged because even when they start making money and all kind of stuff, it's like they're not satisfied with that. They can't do nothing really with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just interesting, Ben. And we say, well, what is the cause of this? John is telling us. Let's listen. And thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee, and thou shalt take hold, but shall not deliver. Right? They take hold of the gun. There's guns floating around everywhere. It's why enough guns and arms to even have a revolution. But there can't be no revolution among the sick people like this until they get well. And that's the revolution right there, getting well. Loving the truth, receiving the truth, taking hold of it. But they're taking hold, but not. But they can't deliver themselves. How come we've been trying to deal with this for the last 40 years, and are we better off 40 years later and for the Vance and Martin Luther for King? You understand? Know what about Martin Luther for King? He's the one. He's like a Christ for us. And that's why, that's your problem, Lord Sheeple. You understand? Know saying? Don't you know Moses, Moses, my servant, is dead. That's what Yeshua says. And now it is time for, you understand, know Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? Now it's Yeshua time. And that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. And what you do save, you know, we hear about all this gun violence and killing. It's, it's, it's wild, my brothers and sisters. You know, we don't, we don't, we're not happy about this. We, we, we would have hoped we could preach another sort of message. You know what I'm saying? But when we look at the situation, the people, we say, John, what should we, what, what should we preach? What should we proclaim? The truth. You understand, the truth may be an offense, but it is not a sin. Thou shalt sow, thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. So, so the, the whole spiritual law is broken. You understand, the spiritual law is broken. One's are sowing, like one's working, working, working. One's working two, three jobs, five jobs. And you understand, and can barely, you know, barely make, you know, make the weak, make ends meet. You understand? Um, thou shalt tread the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil. You know, like we, we do the work, we make them rich, you understand? But we don't really get any of the benefit of it. And then we have some Negroes, some lost sheep, or even in Rasta clothing, you understand? Trying to tell us it's not about slavery, it's not thinking about slavery, it's not about, you know, it's kind of like turn the other cheek. You know, and that wasn't told to the Greco-Romans. That was told to us. You know, and enough of these ones that talk that type of stuff, when we talk about European or white supremacy, they don't turn the other cheek to their own black folks, to their own brothers and sisters. If you get to know them, they're holding grudges against their own black brother and sister, but they want to talk about, you know, turn the other cheek, you know, and to the down presser. That tells you a whole lot right there. And it says, and, and sweet wine, but shall not drink wine. It's like when we, when we reap down their, 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 their fields and we wasn't able to partake of it, then they say Abraham is, 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 is a false father for us, Abraham Lincoln, and he frees us, you know what I'm saying? And then they were promised 40 acres and a mule, and they say, psych, psych, no 40 acres and a mule. You understand? And then the whole double cross of reconstruction. Most folks don't even know about that. Some say that we're in a period of time right now. Remember 1860? You keep hearing these politicians, the Romneyites, Romney Care. Romney Care is going to bring back the 1860s. Think about it. Romney Care. You know, over. I mean, we're not saying that Obamacare. Well, Obamacare is affordable care. I mean, they play these tricks on us. You understand? Know but let us understand this right here. Let's understand this word right here. Verse 16 to complete the chapter. For the statutes of Omri are kept, 
and all the works of the house of Ahab, and ye walk in their counsels. Now, why is this so important? Remember, remember who these people Omri was, and Ahab. Ahab was was Ahab the husband of um, Jezebel? Uh huh. Right? Wasn't that the husband of Jezebel of of Nefertoti? Uh, Nefertati. You understand that you say, "Oh, she's so black. She's so beautiful. Look at her." You understand? Come on, people. Come on, people. You can't. You don't really don't recognize. You don't. You don't get it, right? You you really don't get it. You understand? Anyway, um, study, study. You'll find out. But it says that what they do, they don't keep the statutes. The statutes of Jah. They don't keep the statutes that they were given. And so they keep the statutes of the leading bread drain and sister strain and, and other elders. These were the elders, Omri and Ahab. You understand? And Ahab, you understand? He was a biatch. You understand? For Jezebel, for Jezebel, right? And you walk in their councils. You walk in their councils, not the council of the king of kings, right? You don't consult his majesty, but you follow after men and people. And you wonder why Rastafari is going through this disunity and this disorganization. You understand and can't function a simple organization. You understand can't have a that one say I don't. That's why I don't join organizations. Oh yeah, because you've already joined this organization. You can't leave this organization to join this organization, right? Right. That I should make thee a desolation, make you a desolation. So you look to the east, look to the west. It's a desolation. Look in the ghetto. It's a desolation. And then happens thereof a blessing. Therefore, ye shall bear the reproach. Excuse me, not, not blessing, my bad. Misread that right there. And the inhabitants thereof and hissing. The inhabitants thereof are snakes. So what does the American model say? Because America is, is, this is the modern Balaam, the ownership society, where everybody want to own a piece of stolen property. Own your piece of stolen property. This land is, is if anything, for the Issacharites, you know, and the, and the Gadites. You know, the native tribes over here, this is their land. You understand? Instead of getting into that Hispanic versus blacks, blacks versus Hispanics, get out of that garbage. You see, this is their land. You know what I'm saying? This is their land. You understand? The real one is the so-called foreign national, uh, Ro Pawea, who has on his banner, don't tread on me. And what is it? It's a snake. And he said, we are a godly country. Don't tread on me. And they have a snake. And then they have these idols around there on, on, this, on, on their seals, um, Diana and these false goddesses and these false Roman gods of white supremacy. The inhabitants truly are a hissing. Hissing. You know what I'm saying? See, they needed Obama to cross the road. Why did they elect Obama to cross the road? No, no, for real, in a sense. You know, I don't know if he's picking up on it. You know, or if he's really seeing it himself, who knows? You have to say pray for the president because that's what Josh says that we're supposed to do so we can live a peaceful and quiet life. You understand? Pray that they make the right decision. And you understand? See, when we submit ourselves to Yahweh, you understand? Then Yah works out eye and eye way. You understand? And then the heavens thereof are hissing. Therefore, ye, we, we are bearing. You understand? We are bearing, as it says, we are bearing. The reproach, the curse, you know what I'm saying, of my people. You know what I'm saying? We are still bearing that curse. You know what I'm saying? Come out of Babylon. Know thyself. Identity. Who are you? You know what I'm saying? In the true God and Father of our black Lord in Jesus Christ's sight. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Know who the King of Kings is. And once again, to wrap this up right here. A little bit extended reasoning right here on this, but this is basically just to make that connection with 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 the um the the Hebrew Trinity in a sense out of Egypt, out of Egypt the Hebrew Trinity of Aaron of Moses Aaron and Miriam, you understand? But then as we said, something something happened. Moses had a uh, Ethiopian wife. You know what I'm saying? And from the perspective of Egypt, you, you see, like, people here, even if they go to Africa, they can only interpret things in terms of what they learned in America. It was the same thing with the Israelites, same thing with Mary, you know what I'm saying? Same thing with Aaron, same thing with the other tribes. You know what I'm saying? Now, she, she kind of, in a sense, felt that her place was lost on a certain level. You know what I'm saying? She got agitated. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trusting, 
You know, because you would say with all that they've experienced, why would they still do these things? You know what I'm saying? Why would she still jump up like that? Don't she know she had an honored place? Yeah, but they were heavily influenced. You see, they came out of Egypt, but all of the Egypt did not upgrade and come out of them. Overstand, my brothers and sisters. So once again, this is another lesson, another Rastafari, right knowledge coming from the Ethiopic, from our true roots, another vid that y'all need to, you know, download, you need to disseminate. You understand? That means to sow the seeds of it, you know, to share that here and there and, and elsewhere. I and I give the eye permission if you, if you need it so. You understand? Then so be it. Amen and amen. Yehun, yehun. So stay tuned. Stay in tune with the King of Kings in and through our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. Shalom in the home of Aras Tefarit.